In this video, I'm unboxing the Chewy MiniBook X, setting it up, showcasing its portable use, its unique features, pairing every accessory I own, using magnetic adapters, putting it through real-world use, upgrading the SSD, comparing its speeds with the stock one, and more. All right, let's begin with the unboxing. This is the Intel N100 version, but there is a newer N150 model that is starting to replace it. However, if you can find this one at a lower price, it's definitely worth considering because in real world use, you likely won't notice any difference in performance between the two. I knew the power adapter would come with a European plug, so I came prepared with this adapter plug set. And I am in the United States, so this particular adapter would be it. If you like to skip around or ahead, I hope you don't, you can check out the video chapters below, or just stick around and be surprised because I have got some unique things planned for this mini book X. Also, you'll find affiliate links below for the items featured here in this video. If you decide to purchase anything through those links, I will earn a small commission. So thank you for your support. It is impressively well made for its small size. I just love the size of it. It has a sleek aluminum alloy chassis it, that feels very premium and solid in my hands. Here's a size comparison with my 11 inch iPad Pro M4. The compact form factor makes it feel like a true ultra portable device. And here is my iPad mini 7. My travel ready tech gang. They make perfect trio for any trip. It's small and sleek, fitting comfortably in my hands, or a small bag, making it incredibly portable. Aside from the aluminum alloy body, you'll notice that where the seams meet, the pieces appear to be made of plastic, likely to accommodate the device's radio antenna for better connectivity. Here's the power button and the USB-C ports. More on the ports later. And here are the vent holes and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It isn't a powerhouse, but it's perfect for everyday tasks like web browsing, streaming YouTube, checking emails, and even some light productivity on the go. The keys are surprisingly large for a device of this size, offering a spacious layout that looks comfortable for typing. Here I am testing out the hinges for tablet mode, even though I don't plan to use it in this mode. Now have a listen to how the keyboard sounds while typing or just messing around. I'm sorry, that's quite annoying, but the trackpad is quite clicky. And now turning it on. Oh, by the way, it's a touch screen. Of course, I use Chrome as my browser since I have so many Google accounts, YouTube, Gmail, and more. A quick internet speed test. And I'm connecting my Apple Magic Trackpad. Yes, an Apple Trackpad on a Windows device. But as you can see, I'll need a driver from GitHub.
And you've got these stickers that prevent scratches to remove. Oh, I almost forgot to show you. It also comes with these keyboard stickers. These are great if you need different language layouts or just want to customize your keys. This is for my 4K monitor. I just want to mirror the MiniBook X screen. I'll get the sidebar since it mirrors the MiniBook's native resolution. That is unless I close the lid and use it in clamshell mode. The MiniBook X screen runs at 50 hertz, but the monitor displays 60 hertz because Windows automatically adjusts to match the external display's standard refresh rate. I should also pair my Apple Magic Keyboard. No driver needed for this one. Here's what makes this mini book very convenient. With these USB-C magnetic adapters, I can connect and disconnect easily. Traveling with a mini book is a breeze. Just snap it on or off without any hassle. Let me show you how these things work. Connect the main body here and connect the head. Here. You'll get used to the way this looks. My iPhone, my iPad, my bunch of other gadgets have this little magnetic adapter sticking out. It's just part of my setup now. This right angle one may not work side by side with a straight one. So I do have another straight one. This back port is for the power adapter, but it also supports data transfer. Now let's check if it's charging. And it is. This front port is full featured, meaning it supports power delivery, data transfer, and video output all through a single connection. Of course, pairing my AirPods as well. Close the lid, unplug everything easily with the magnetic adapters, and just like that, I am ready to take the MiniBook anywhere. Next, before I start modifying this MiniBook, I'd like to show you here in this sped up clip, I am showing you exactly what I can use the MiniBook X for. Online tutoring, it handles video calls, screen sharing, and everything I need smoothly. The best part, I can do this from anywhere in the world, making it a perfect portable setup for remote work. Now it's time to upgrade the SSD. I'll be swapping out the stock drive for a faster one to boost performance. If you want to see how I got to this point, let's just say it was a journey. Before finally getting the real Samsung 790 EVO Plus, I accidentally bought a fake one. It's a long story, but if you're curious, I have the link to that video in the description. You might find it interesting. Before successfully installing the real Samsung drive, I had to go through quite a process. First, I cloned the stock drive onto the fake one using a cloning device. Then I used software to clone the fake drive onto the real one. If you're curious about how and why I had to do all that, please check out the video. Now back to the newly installed drive, the real one. Of course, speed test with Crystal Dismark. On the iPad, you see the stock SSD speeds. Not bad, but not great. 
On the Minibook X, the newly installed Samsung 7D Evo Plus is much faster with significantly better read and write speeds. A huge upgrade. And here are the speeds of the fake drive, pretty much on par with the stock one. Nowhere near the real upgrade though. And here are the results for the second run. Again, versus the stock drive. And after all that cloning, I ran into the MMC snap in error caused by the new faster drive having a smaller capacity than the stock one. Long story again. So I had to do a clean install of Windows 11 along with all the necessary drivers like the touchscreen. Shui actually recommends using their pre-installed driver version of Windows 11. I've included the necessary link to the documentation in the description if you like to do the same. So that wraps up my journey with the Shui Minibook X. From unboxing and setting it up to upgrading the SSD and troubleshooting along the way. Despite some hiccups, the final result is a much faster, more capable device that's perfect for my needs. Anyway, thank you for watching.